They're safe. Bringing the Sith fully online. Do it. Und damit herzlich willkommen zurück zu Star Trek Resurgence. Jeder Einsatz hat seinen Preis. Wer bist du? Nilly. Ah ja, 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 ja. Sie sind äh, wieder zurück. I'm good. Help me with him. Neue Aufnahme. Muss erstmal gucken, wo wir waren. Ja. Let's get this off. Oha! Was hat er? Oh Gott! Medical. Got one wounded at my location. Carter. You don't look so good. Nee. Obwohl, das sieht aus wie ein Tattoo. Schon ein bisschen cool. Krankentrage. Ab auf die Krankenstation. I just got here. I'm not ready to see you two get blown to space dust just yet. Now let's get you down to sick bay. Great. Status report. The repair crew made it inside. EPS flow is back to nominal levels. The SIF is back up. How does this affect mission readiness, Mr. Ermott? Releasing the docking clamps using hull polarity minimized damage to the Resolute. We'll have some last minute repairs to make, but if we reapportion some of the staff, we can make our departure on time. As of now, however, we are successfully moored to the station. Good to hear. Send updates to my ready room. Commander Rydek, with me. Ja, come on, let's go. Vielleicht können wir noch mal zum Replikator gehen. Habe ich was falsch gemacht eigentlich? Ja, ne? Wir sind ja, wir haben ja entgegen seiner Anweisung gehandelt, wenn ich mich recht erinnere. Hm. You disobeyed my orders. Ja, genau. Well. Tut mir leid. I'm sorry for that, Captain. I you did what disobeyed I thought was... my orders. And not just in front of the bridge crew, but the Starbase staff as well. That's going to get around. My name's already tarnished around the fleet. But what is it going to do to my credibility on this ship? From the top to the bottom. Bridge to lower decks. Captain, I told you I'd be honest. So here it is. Maybe I shouldn't have disobeyed a direct order. But you were wrong. You weren't on board and you didn't have all the information. So I made the right decision for the ship. If you're worried about your credibility, put your ego aside and trust your crew. Oh, das ist zu so krass. Oh, trust das ist zu so krass. Oh Gott, oh Gott, oh Gott. You might have won some fans on the bridge with that stunt, but not everyone. <lacht> Lieutenant Commander Chovak has already bent my ear. I'm sure he doesn't take it personally. He'll get over it in time. Mr. Chovak is more complicated than he would want to admit. I guess we all are. And if I'm being honest, I'm not sure what I would have done in the moment either. Yes, sir? You never really know if you weren't in those shoes. Mm. So let's just boil it down to you did what you had to. You placed a lot of trust in me, bringing me here. I feel like I've let you down. I brought you here for a reason. I'm still sure it was the right one. Good. Okay. Despite it all, we got our final Starfleet clearance to depart. So if you'll fetch Mr. Ermott, we'll knock out the final details of any outstanding repairs, and then we'll set out for Hotari. Yes, sir. Okay, alles gut, wir haben es gerettet. Wir sind noch mal ein bisschen auf die emotionale und Beziehungsebene gegangen und haben noch mal alles umgekehrt. Er ist nicht mehr sauer. Und wir sind nicht degradiert oder auch nicht vom Kriegsgericht. Bereit zum Aufbruch, los geht's. Oh mein Gott. Es hat alles funktioniert. Alle leben noch. All departments reporting full mission readiness. We've got our full complement on board. This is my favorite moment, right now. The start of a new mission is always full of possibility. The Orion Syndicate could sell it as a drug. <laughs> Don't let the Admiralty hear you say that. Captain on the bridge. 
Sit. Sit, everyone. You all know, I'm not big on speeches. We're embarking on the first mission since our refit. Let's make it a good one. Disengage docking clamps. Jetzt geht's los. Uh. Docking clamps released. Thrusters ahead, Mr. Handar. Muss ich wieder was machen? Bestimmt. Muss bestimmt gleich selber fliegen oder so. Oh oh. Und so viel Verantwortung. Oh, jetzt habe ich mir jetzt darf ich mir aussuchen, was ich sagen soll. Uh. Ich nehme Energie. Engage. Engage. Ja. Was war das denn? Whoa. Careful. Thank you. I'm fine. Really. I uh... You don't look fine. Ja, irgendwas stimmt nicht, ne? Oh Gott, wie komme ich da hin? Äh, mit der Maus, die ist mir so schwer fertig jetzt. Oh oh, wir müssen zur Krankenstation, oder? I have to get to sick bay. Go. Uns ist ein bisschen sch schawindelig. Autsch. Also der Deuteriumspiegel scheint gefallen zu sein. Wir brauchen doch irgendwie Deuterium oder sowas. Weil wir irgendeine... So irgendwas haben? I don't know. Well. That was quite a scare. A few minutes more and it would have been one of the shortest tenures on record for a first officer. Is that the engineer that was out on the hull? That storm did a real number on him, but he'll live. Just needs rest. You should worry about yourself. Mm. Your deridium levels got dangerously low. Deridium, nicht deridium. Deridium. This is definitely one of the more memorable first days I can think of. My name is Dr. Aram Duval, Chief Medical Officer. To be honest, I've never met a Kobliad before. You're rare, I know. I was going to say special. Your people's numbers have dwindled, despite the Federation's efforts to find a more readily available alternative to the Deridium you need to survive. Yet you joined Starfleet and managed to thrive. I imagine the responsibility must be overwhelming. Maybe even a burden at times. Mm. I know what it means. And I know the responsibility that comes with it. But I can't be anything more than who I am. And if someone has a problem with that or expects something else, then that's their problem, not mine. That's exactly right. And don't worry, I won't treat you like a science experiment. I just do the science and leave the experiments to Solano. You don't agree with his methods? I don't agree with his definition of acceptable risks. Not when the lives of your crew are at stake. My professional opinion is that the accident took a toll. More than he's willing to admit. He's overstressed, operating in the pressure cooker of his own mind. Which is never a good headspace when the lives of your crew are at stake. What concerns me is that now he's even further away from the thing he's been chasing his entire career. Breakthrough discovery. The major innovation. 
Something he can put his name on. Was passiert, wenn ich nicht reagiere? Ich, ich warte mal ab, was passiert, wenn ich keine Nummer auswähle. People become blinded by their own ambition. I've seen it happen before. Ich nehme mal die eins. I think after what ah, happened, okay. Captain Solano's learned his lesson, and whatever ambition he once had is on hold for a while. He may say that, but we'll see what happens. And I have to give you credit for what happened on the bridge. It took guts to defy a direct order. Huh. I guess word travels fast around here. It's a small ship, and everyone's curious about the new XO. Fortunately, your cell structure is almost completely stabilized. And I'll spare us both the lecture, but I do feel it's my responsibility to remind you, without regular infusions of deridium, you will not live. It's as simple as that. Hmm, okay. Understood. Then, my work here is done. Irgendwie suspect die Frau, ne? Sehr suspect die Frau. Sorry. I didn't mean to be lurking outside of sick bay. I didn't want to intrude, so it felt more appropriate to wait out here. We were all worried about you. Or I should say I was. I wasn't sure what was happening at first. But then I realized it was your condition. I'm feeling much better. Thank you. It's just part of who I am. Well, being a jerk sometimes is part of who I am. So, I'm sorry for that. You trusted my intuition earlier. With a deflector pulse. I felt I should thank you for that. Well, thank you for coming. Even though you didn't have to. I wanted to. Now, Carter, the emissions that gave you that burn are quite unusual, like everything else that goes with this storm. That's a combination of hyronolin and lectrazine to counter the radiation effects. That should help speed your healing. She's come by a couple of times to see you already. Be brief. Mm, romantic in the luft. It's good to see you awake again. I was starting to get worried. Not that you aren't in good hands with Dr. Duvall. Klassischer Satz. You no, know, you can't get rid of me that easy. Don't push me, Diaz. You do not want to see me try. No, nope. <laughs> I am not getting on your bad side. I am a formidable enemy. <laughs> Millie was looking in on you too, by the way. But since it's just us right now, I... I had a chance to think about this while I was away. And I thought it was important that I just come out and tell you. Instead of tiptoeing around... Das mich. Du stehst auf mich? Worse. Now, this is just a guess, but... You like me. Is that what this is? How'd you know? It must have been pretty obvious. Hast mir gewünscht? Because, well, you know, I was hoping. I guess that makes this a little easier to say. We've been really good friends for a long time. I want to see if there's more between us than just being friends. Okay, wir machen jetzt den Sack zu. Einfach zu machen. You don't have to explain it. I feel the same way. There is something between jetzt knutschen us. und fertig. So, do you want to find out what that something is? If it's there for you, and it's there for me, why not give it a try? <laughs> Are you kidding me? I just said yes. <laughs> I wanted to be sure I heard that right. Sorry to interrupt, but uh, the patient needs to rest if he wants to get back to his old self. Of course. I'll see you again soon. Ich kann irgendwie, weiß ich nicht, die, die Grafik der Protagonisten und so ist ein bisschen so wie veraltetes, wie, wie veraltete Spiele oder ältere Spiele. Ne? Das wirkt alles ein bisschen älter. Aber die Story ist ja das Wichtigste, irgendwie bei Star Trek auch. So. 
Und es ist schwierig, so wenig zu reden bei so einem Story-Game. Das ist echt sehr schwierig gerade. Aber Commander kann ja nicht, die reden ja alle. I Captain. Let's reduce the noise. Filter out environmental signals. I can manually tune what's left for Federation signal types. Was soll ich machen? Was soll ich machen? Ah hier. Ich habe jetzt einfach irgendwas gemacht. I've located the shuttle. Opening comms. On screen. Shuttle to Resolute. Shuttle to Resolute. Debris field. Lost maneuvering. Losing. I can't get it any clearer. It won't get a transporter lock. It's just not happening. Power up the tractor beam. We'll pull them directly into the docking bay. Is there wieder? Diaz, you good to run the tractor emitter? Yes, sir. Uh. You sure? I'm sure. Come on, Diaz. Come. First thing, Strahl, los. lock onto the shuttle and stabilize the rotation. Hol, hol sie rein. Muss ich was tun? Hier. Ich sehe... Pulling in debris. I'm on it. Oh, look, Mark. Nick. Nah. So, and then noch. Weg damit, weg damit, weg damit. Ja, sehr gut. Hast du gut gemacht, Dias. That's gonna take out the shuttle. Dias, the bridge. There's a large piece of debris headed for oh, the no. shuttle. The tractor beam can't handle it. Can our shields take it? I believe so. Und wenn nicht? Commander Rydek, plot an intercept course. Wir riskieren einen Höhlenbruch. On it. Oder so. Diese Maus, ne? Ey, das ist, ähm... Abfangkurs? Ich mach doch hier alles falsch gerade, oder? Los! Here we go. Maneuvering thrusters bearing 53 Mark 17. 200 meters on an intercept course. Maneuvering. Ich hab, glaube ich, irgendeinen Quatsch gemacht gerade. Ich hab keine Ahnung. Vielleicht äh, klappt es aber. Ist das gut? Okay, jetzt hier rein. Rein, 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 rein. Ja, fein. Haben wir es denn endlich? Uh. On board. Good job. We're on our way down to meet them. Terra firma. So the Spock. Was das Spock sein? Yes, so the Spock. Oh my God. Oh. Ich glaube das ja wohl nicht. Leonard Nimoy. Ich muss unbedingt hin. Eine Legende betritt unser Raumschiff. The captain will be right down to meet you, sir. In that case, I will wait for him here. Lebe lang und in Frieden, Spock. Hat man das gesehen? Jetzt hier, guck, wie gut ich das kann. Okay, was jetzt? Stehen wir jetzt nur rum? Wir kommen an Bord. Wow. Let me be the first to say, welcome to the Resolute, Ambassador. Thank you, 
Petty officer. Diaz. Carter? Carter Diaz, sir. I am pleased to meet you, Petty Officer Carter Diaz. It appears I have you to thank for my safe arrival. Is that the original voice of Leonard Nimoy? If I may say so. Well, it wasn't all me. I got some help from upstairs. A bombastic approach to clearing debris. We thought we were prepared for our arrival in Hotari space, but it is evident my craft was not sufficiently robust for such intense ionic activity. The storm has been pretty intense. There was an element that was most unusual. Before you came to our aid, our maneuvering thrusters and impulse engines were rendered inoperable. So we attempted a short traversal at warp speed, only to find that we could not achieve warp at all. Even though our diagnostics computer showed no faults or anomalies, what do you make of that? When all indications say that warp speed is possible, but in practice, we find it is not. I'd rather investigate than speculate. A sound principle. Take readings, run some additional diagnostic checks, and we'll get to the bottom of this. Quite logical, Petty Officer Diaz. Thank you. Ach, Spock. Ich wollte Spock fotografieren. Egal, ich mache das später in, aus dem, aus dem Video. Ich bin froh, dich an Bord zu haben. Ich möchte es bereits sein. Wir sind bereits Das war ja mal krass gerade. Das habe ich jetzt nicht erwartet. Ob da wohl noch mehr äh, Star Trek, Star Trek Größen kommen werden? Falls ihr das wisst, ich will es nicht wissen. Ich möchte nicht gespoilert werden. Ambassador Spock, my senior staff. It's not every day that a captain gets to welcome a Starfleet legend aboard. Hmm. Hmm. You flatter me, Captain Solano. But legend implies the past tense. Whereas I am very much focused on our present circumstances. I didn't mean to suggest you were stuck in the past. You're right, Ambassador. Not the most diplomatic choice of words. Your experience comes from the past. But our present situation calls for it. True enough. We were hoping you could fill us in on the details. We got the basics from Starfleet. Two formerly peaceful neighbors are now on the brink of war. Indeed. And the tension between them grows fiercer by the hour. Olydia and Hotari. The Olydians are the more advanced species. They made first contact with the Hotari over a century ago. This is Tau, the Hotari moon. It is rich in dilithium. And for decades, the Hotari and the Olydians have shared a mining operation there. The Olydians provide the technological resources, while the Hotari have served as the labor force. The stability of that arrangement was the source of their peace, until recently. The Hotari have suddenly and forcefully seized control of the mining operations, and expelled the Olydians from their system. That is the official story as told by the Hotari when they requested Federation mediation. But the details remain scant. Communications between all parties have been limited by the ionic interference. What are the Hotari defensive capabilities? Do they stand a chance to hold on to the mines now that they've taken them? It is unlikely the relatively primitive Hotari forces would prevail against the Lydian fleet in open war. But would have been equally unlikely to predict they could take possession of the mines until they did just that. Which leaves many unanswered questions. Left unchecked, this conflict will result in more bloodshed, which is what we are here to prevent. And the dilithium trade hangs in the balance. Clearly the Hotari have been exploited in this relationship. Maybe we can persuade them peace is the more profitable alternative for everyone. 
Hatari. They both profited from the mines. And for the Hatari, something is better than nothing. Peace is our objective, after all. If we could convince them, it would restore the peace. But we would need the Hatari to accept a difficult compromise. Made all the more difficult by the emotions flaring on both sides, no doubt. Neither the Illidians or the Hotari are members of the Federation, so we can't make them do anything. There is an additional complicating factor I should mention. In the past, the Federation has relied on the Illidians as a source of dilithium. That certainly changes things. The Federation sources its dilithium from a lot of places. Yeah, and this is one of them. So we've already played a part in this. Unfortunately, that is indeed the case, Commander Rydek. We're morally obligated to make this right. Hold on. Our only obligation is to negotiate the peaceful resolution of this conflict. Given the Federation's involvement in the Illidium dilithium trade, Captain Solano and I must make every effort to appear neutral in these negotiations. What worries me is if this whole thing unravels and we're at the mercy of the storm at less than full strength. We can't let it come to that. Considering what the Ion Storm has done to our ship and the Ambassador's shuttle, we have to assume the Illidian fleet has had problems with it as well. This recent surge in the energy disturbance temporarily levels the playing field. Commander Westbrook is correct. The energy anomalies around the Hotari systems have been noted in the past. But... They have never been observed on the orders of magnitude we have seen in recent weeks. The field isn't level. We have the backing of the entire Federation. Either of these forces would be foolish to attack us. That's probably what the Illidians thought, too. We are here because we are up to the task at hand. All the more reason to learn as much about the energy anomaly while we can. We do not want to be caught at a disadvantage, should the situation escalate. So I trust we understand our circumstances. We're operating on a strict timetable here, and we're going to be leaving for the negotiations shortly. Commander Westbrook, I want you to leverage our systems to investigate the anomaly from here while we're gone. Aye, Captain. Thank you all. Dismissed. I want to speak to both of you privately. Ambassador Spock, I'd like to make a formal introduction. My first officer, Commander Jara Rydek. Commander, as you are aware, there are limits to what Captain Solano and I can do in our official capacity as representatives of the Federation. But someone in an unofficial capacity, your first officer, for example, would not be bound by those restrictions. Commander Ryder could ingratiate herself to certain parties behind the scenes, where they may be more candid in revealing information that could lead to a resolution. She certainly goes her own way. Ich bin keine Diplomatin. With all due respect, Ambassador, I'm not a trained diplomat. That's yeah. exactly what we're going to leverage. I began my time in Starfleet as a science officer, not as an ambassador. Mm. We must be adaptable in the line of duty. Well, I hope Commander Rydek will have more luck finding out what really happened than we will through official diplomatic channels. The fate of the negotiations, the interests of the Federation, and the prospect for peace. Oh God, we must have peace. Oh God, na gut. Hmm. Hmm. How bad is he? Look, just like me. Oh God. So, kann ich mal hier irgendwie, das hier wollte ich mal kurz gucken, weil wenn ich auf Leer äh, drücke, dann kann man ja einmal äh, auch die Crew checken. Und zwar einmal aus Sicht von Jera und einmal aus Sicht von Carter Diaz. Also er hatte jetzt Kontakt mit äh, Paddy Officer, Officer Etzila, ne, die er gerettet hat quasi. Er hat sie gerettet, dann, das ist jetzt seine Freundin, Beziehung, bla bla, dann hat er hier Schowak. Auch ein Vulkanier. Ja, und dann hat er jetzt Botschaft des Bock kennengelernt. Er war sehr beeindruckt von dem, was äh, Kader gemacht hat und was für ein 
krasser Teamplayer er ist. Und Jara, also Jara, Jara? Und Captain Solano. Wie ist das mit Spock? Und vor allem. Was ist mit Dr. Duval? Hm. Naja, das wollte ich auf jeden Fall mal kurz gucken. Nein, ich will das nicht verlassen. Ich will fortfahren. So, weiter. Navigationsprobleme. Mr. Diaz, I understand you have already discussed the warp drive failure with Ambassador Spock? I have. It is imperative that the Ambassador's shuttle be flight ready. I need you both to ascertain the root cause of the system failures he encountered. I'm surprised, Commander. I thought you would have wanted to work on Ambassador Spock's shuttle yourself. I respect the Ambassador and his many accomplishments. But I do not derive any satisfaction from interacting with his shuttle as if it were somehow transubstantiated through its association with him. Especially when I have the entirety of this starship to concern myself with. The Ambassador asked me to take a look, and I'm ready to crack this thing open. Good. You could learn from Mr. Diaz's focus. I'll take notes. <laughs> Then I will leave you to it. Make note of any abnormalities in your report. Carry on. Wir nehmen jetzt das Ding auseinander. It seems like he's warming up to us. Yeah. Even Chovok has to look at that face and know you've earned some real respect. And I have to admit that I owe you one. You were right to make me sure this mechanics. I don't know what I was thinking. You've pulled me out of trouble how many times? Call it even. Okay. At the very least, maybe I can track down that bottle of sorry and brandy you're still on the hook for. But first, we have work to do. Ready to go? All set. Let's run the diagnostic. Okay, ich darf wieder Sachen machen, ne? Diagnostic? Hier, ja, ja. Yeah. Uh, begin diag... Na, rüber mit der Maus, ja, 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 ja. Diagnostic. So. I know about your talk with Miranda. You, you do? She sent me a priority one dispatch right after your conversation. <laughs> I'm happy for you. Both of you. <sighs> Thanks. But I'm only... Sie sehen so ein bisschen aus wie Sims, once. oder? Don't screw this up. Because I would be very unhappy if you tried this out and then, I don't know, six weeks or six days later, I have to start splitting holidays between the two of you. All because things went south and you're not on speaking terms. Bist du eigentlich sauer? That just isn't going to work for me. Are you upset? <laughs> not on your life, Diaz. But you need to be careful. I like my friends and I like our group. I don't want to lose that. Is that thing mm. done? Yeah, it's wrapping up. Let's see. The relays along the primary EPS are blown. The backup relays are all intact. An EPS overload from the warp drive could cause that. But how did the shuttle end up dead in the water? Huh. Well, maybe the ship's data recorder can tell us something. Here. They were only about eight minutes from their plotted warp point. No faults, just those warnings. What are they? What? What should I do? Must I right click? Yeah. Subspace variance out of tolerance. What does that mean? It means the main navigation array lost sight of space somehow. Will the array going offline cause that? Yes, but it should have also thrown a fault code. So, what no? The warp field became inverted suddenly. I've seen this happen when the center warp coil cracks. A cracked warp coil throws a fault code. Still, we should take a look. Mm hmm. 
There was a complete warp cascade failure. Wow. They're lucky the shuttle didn't turn inside out. Makes me think the computer panicked on the warp field equation. Any one of these failures should have thrown a fault. If it was caused by a system failure. None of this caused the relays to blow. Roll forward to when that happened. Yes, ma'am. So here, they take a moment to get their bearings, and they attempt to re-engage the warp drive. There. That's the relays blowing. And look, there's another warp system alert. Now they're all the same. Subspace variants out of tolerance, or warp inversions. Finally, there's a complete warp cascade failure. Then it's one of two things. Either a warp coil is cracked, or the navigation array is offline. That makes sense. Divide and conquer. You want to check the warp coils or the navigation array? I'll check the other. Ich nehme das Navigationssystem. One of these systems is likely broken. I'll check the navigation array. Ja. Wir checken das Navigationssystem. Dein Tricorder kann Dateien aufzeichnen und analysieren. Wenn du ihn benutzt, wirst du zuvor ungesehene Dinge entdecken. Benutze zwei, um deinen Tricorder hervorzuholen oder zurückzustecken. Halte linke Maustaste gedrückt, um leuchtende Objekte zu scannen. Du musst nah an manchen Objekten sein, um sie scannen zu können. Achte auf den Rand des Bildschirms, um zu sehen, ob du zu, zu weit weg bist. Okay. Tricorder. Leuchtende Dinge. Ah, warte. Geh ran. Aus der Reichweite? Wie meinst du aus der Reichweite? Hier? Ah ja. Manche Dinge, die du scannst, aktivieren einen Tiefenscan. Benutze während eines Tiefenscans Q und E. Um zwischen verschiedenen Scan-Modi hin und her zu wechseln und nach leuchtenden Objekten zu suchen. Die Modusanzeige auf dem Tricorder blinkt, wenn es ein Objekt in dem Modus zu finden gibt. Wenn du alle Objekte gescannt hast, ändert sich die Farbe des Rahmens. Halte rechte Maustaste gedrückt, um die Daten äh, zu analysieren und den Scan abzuschließen. Okay, ich habe keine Ahnung. Da noch irgendwas? Ich kann halt ähm, eins von drei Anomalien gescannt. Wie komme ich hier wieder raus? Nein. Fortfahren. Wegstecken. Irgendwas fehlt. Ich kann irgendwie, ich kann es nicht wegstecken, ne? Hier. Chemischer Scan-Modus. Ah, okay, jetzt, 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 jetzt. Jetzt haben wir es. Also einmal war dieser Rot mit diesem Rot war auf Q und E war chemischer Scan-Modus. Except it's not. Checked and double checked. Well, the readings don't lie. Here comes the security detail for the way team. Hey. I'm not here. We're escorting the negotiating team to the surface as soon as they come down from the bridge. I don't want to interrupt some important work. I was just hoping to see you before I go. Tschüss. The captain and the others will be here any minute now. Should be an interesting ride down to the surface. And you're the one with the important job to do, keeping the captain safe. And Ambassador Spock. Mm -hmm. It doesn't always feel that way. Baking in the hot sun, standing guard next to an empty shuttlecraft. But it has its moments. Hey Maris, aren't these those button pushers you're always hanging out with? 
And you're the phaser jockeys we always beat in Parisi squares, right? All aboard for Hotari. That another one of the captain's railroad things? <laughs> Gotta be. I just usually zone out by the time he gets to the whole, uh, steam engines were the warp drives of their day part. Catch y'all later. You don't want to miss your train. I do have to go. Not gonna nee. lie. I'd rather not leave right now. Nicht küssen. More important. Das ist unprofessionell. Go on. Do your job. I'll be right here waiting for you when you get back. You better be. Tschüss. Irgendwie unangenehm, ich weiß auch nicht. Wie sehen Sie? Vielleicht nimmt er doch lieber die andere mit den kurzen Haaren. Ich glaube, die will auch ein bisschen was von ihm, oder? So. Etzelar de Diaz. If you could float back down to reality, we still have a ways to go. Oder auch nicht. Keine All right, Angst. where were we? So the where, where and we? the navigation array are fine, but the nav computer doesn't seem to think so. I'm out of ideas short of field stripping the shuttle from bow to stern. You want to take this out of the shuttle and throw it on the bench? Oh, real hands on maintenance. Oh, yeah. Komm, lass uns alles aus ausschlachten und okay, scannen. Okay, the nav computer is patched into the ship. The ship's computer can double check our work. If the shuttle's nav computer is putting out false data, we'll know it. Let's run through the shuttle's logs again. Running now. Okay. Same. Warp field inversion and a cascade failure. However, the Resolute computer doesn't show the same subspace variance. We're in the same conditions that the shuttle was in when it failed. Why wouldn't the ship's computer get a matching result? What if... The subspace variance was a momentary occurrence. That's a possibility, and it would explain why the simulation under our current sensor readings failed to reproduce the issue. But a subspace anomaly strong enough to cause a warp field collapse would leave graviton ripples for days. Let's run with the momentary subspace variance theory for now. Roll forward to the shuttle's attempt to re-engage the warp drive. We need the conditions of space around the shuttle at the moment of warp failure. Resuming simulation. Ooh. So, weiter? Ja? Error in warp field calculation. Cochrane formula variables are out of range. That right there. Take the shuttle sensor data from that moment. Computer, why did the warp field calculation fail? Warp field pressure return non-orthogonal. Results are undefined. Das ist doch klar. That doesn't help. Wait, what if we use a different ship? the Resolute into the simulation instead of the shuttle. Yeah, it should warp just fine. Unless... Computer, run the simulation with the Resolute. Resolute simulated. Computer, give me manual control on the warp power. Static field intensity, warp 1.1, 1.2, 1.3. Warp pressure is destabilizing. Error in warp field calculation. The warp drive has experienced a system-wide cascade failure. Warp field collapsed. Subspace variance is out of tolerance. Cochrane formula results are undefined. Bingo. what -o? The same moment when the shuttle failed to warp, so did the ship. Whatever happened to the shuttle just happened to us. The Resolute will not sustain warp. Oh, oh. We can't leave Hotari's face. Oh, oh. We sind Gefangene. Okay, jetzt sind wir auf Hotari. Oh, interessant. Da oben. Bei dem Wasserfall. Okay. Friedensgespräche. Hm, ob das was wird. Ambassador Spock, Captain Solano, welcome to Hotari. 
We are honored you have come. My name is Tylus Altaris, Minister of Diplomatic Affairs. The honor is ours, and this is Commander Jara Rydek, first officer aboard the USS Resolute. You'll find she has a keen mind and unique insight into the dynamics between the Atari and the Lydians. We are honored to be here as representatives of the Federation. I'm so glad. These must be the representatives of the mighty Federation, the reigning authority in the galaxy. Or so we That Stein im Gesicht als Whether that's true or not remains to be seen. But either way, we're grateful you've made the time to come to our little corner of the universe. And you are? This is Galvin, and this is Citron, the heroes of the revolt in the mines. Mhm. Mm Wir sehen aus wie Krieger. Okay, das sind die anderen. Let's hope this is the last time we ever have to come here. Die mögen sich. If you'll excuse me. Wir sehen zivilisierter aus. Heißt aber gar nichts. Mal gucken. Did you hear the arrogance from that guy? Mm. I don't know what we're walking into here. But that guy was. Wir bleiben something. offen, genau. That may be true. But let's keep an open mind going into the negotiations. Hopefully he's just one voice amongst many. Then let's hope he's the outlier. Well, Tari have invited us as their guests. So we must show them the proper respect. Yeah. Correct. Respekt. Oder hätten wir Stärke nehmen sollen als Frau? Hm. Ambassador Spock, welcome to Hotari Prime. The honor is mine, Your Majesty. That the Federation would send one of their most respected representatives is not only an honor to the Hotari people and their queen, but recognition of our stature and importance. Let's get on with it, shall we? With all due respect to the Federation and their ambassador, they have no authority here. We are not members of their alliance. We are not subject to their rule, nor yours. We demand the immediate return of all mining operations to Elydian control, as it has been for centuries and will be for centuries more. That has always been our oh. understanding. That understanding has changed. Then you invite war. And if you cannot remain silent, you will be silenced. But his point is well taken. What is the Federation's interest in this matter? Um. Perhaps you would have us trade one oppressor for another? The Federation remains neutral. Our only interest is the peaceful resolution Can of this speak? conflict. We are here at your request, Your Majesty. For now. I'm trying to keep an open mind here, but it's not easy. I thought they wanted us here. Was there something you wanted to say, Captain? Oh, no. My apologies. And what about the Cobliard? She's not She can speak for herself, can't she? Yeah, oh God. Then let her. Wir können alles falsch machen jetzt. Oh, die haben nur drei Finger. Na, no, Tari. What is your name? Commander Jara Rydek, Your Majesty. Being a Kobliard, you would know better than anyone. Your people suffered brutal treatment at the hands of the Cardassians. 
Their injustice towards the Kodliad is as unimaginable as it is unforgivable. The mm -hmm. Not unlike how we have been treated by the Alidians. As much as they'd have you believe they are the victims here, remember it was the Hotari who attacked us. Hundreds of innocent Alidians were slaughtered without mercy in those mines. The blood is on their hands, not ours. Quiet! If after all the Kobliad suffered, you finally had the chance to right that wrong, to get out from under their control, would you take it? Or would you negotiate a peace? Frieden. Ich würde immer nach Frieden streben. There is no remedy for what the Kobliad suffered. And I fear who we might have become in pursuit of it. There is no justice if the oppressed become yeah. the oppressor. You know. So I would willingly accept a peaceful resolution if it were offered. That is the real opportunity. Perhaps, Commander Rydak. Perhaps. Unfortunately, that was not the case. Was it? No. It was not. Peace is often elusive to those who need it most. The Federation is the most powerful, most advanced alliance in the galaxy. It's widely known we have an abundance of dilithium in our minds. And it's in your interest to secure a steady supply. Your Majesty, if I may. Ambassador Spock would have us believe you're here as a neutral party in the interest of peace. Yeah, wants to show it. So why are you really here? I want the truth. Not your Federation rhetoric. Geht uns um Frieden. As Ambassador Spock has said, we've come seeking a peaceful resolution to this conflict and have no interest in your dilithium. I'm not nearly as naive as you must think. The Federation has done business with the Illidians for decades, which makes me question your motives. What okay, they have said, jetzt? but cannot deny, is a simple truth. The dilithium trade would not and will no longer exist without a Lydian involvement. We created it for the benefit of everyone, especially the Hotari. We've given them warp technology. We've let them share in the profits. We've made their lives infinitely better than before dilithium was discovered. All of that goes away if the Federation turns a blind eye to their treachery. That is enough of your lies! The Hotari are quite capable of running the mines. We've done so for centuries. Okay. So tell me, who deserves control of the dilithium trade and the mines on town? Who should the Federation recognize? The Hotari or the Alidians? Um only be one or the other not both oh fuck ich nehme die hotari ich weiß nicht was ich nehmen soll ich nehme einfach die hotari if i have to choose only one then it would have to be the hotari well said how could the just and wise federation make any ist alles falsch. other choice this is an outrage the Federation has lost all credibility. The mines are ours. Lydia will not be deterred. We will take back our mines by any means oh, necessary. We will see more blood spilled. I am more than willing to address your concerns, Your Majesty. Yours as well, Representative. But I suggest we could have a more productive conversation with a smaller group. Perhaps only the most essential representatives. I suppose there is some sense to that. Wenn du nur zwei Auswahlmöglichkeiten hast, dich für eine Seite entscheiden musst, schwierig. I hope we meet again, Jara Ryder. Oh Gott, das war alles ähm, 
Aber ich glaube, es wäre egal gewesen. Wenn ich die anderen genommen hätte, wären die wahrscheinlich direkt auf Krieg gegangen und hätten uns äh, mit Waffen bedroht oder so. Keine Ahnung. Spock und ich werden alles auf der front diplomatischen front Du machst es nice mit den Locals und schau, ob du some some Antworten bekommst. We need to find out why the Hotari are so willing to risk war. What happened in those mines? Hm, was ist dort passiert? Okay, wir können jetzt mit Leuten reden und herausfinden, was dort passiert. Kann ich mit dem auch reden? Nope. Wie viel Zeit habe ich? Ich fange jetzt hier mal an. Kann ich hier reden? Nein. Hier, mit dem kann ich reden. Ein Hotari, Sidron. Commander, yeah. I'm glad you've chosen to side with the Hotari. I knew the Federation would see through the Elidians' baseless claims Steh auf keine protect Seite. the interests of my people. To be clear, I'm not on either side of this conflict. Our only interest is peace. Hmm. I will keep that Sehr in gut. mind. I assume you were there, the day the mines were seized from the Elidians. Not seized. Reclaimed. And restored to their rightful owners. Yes, I was there. We had to be decisive. Before the Elidians could even realize their worst nightmare was upon them. Were the Hotari miners armed during the revolt? I'm just trying to understand how it happened. If by that you mean armed with centuries of abuse and exploitation at the hands of the Elidians, then yes. Which doesn't really answer my question. We had them vastly overwhelmed from the start. They respect one thing above all else, and that is force. The greater the force, the more certain the outcome. Any talk of making peace is just that, and worth little without the strength to secure it. Which makes me wonder about your ship, the Resolute. Undoubtedly the Federation's finest warship. Ready to contend with anything the Elidians might have in store. Or is that not true? Maybe I've misjudged it. It wasn't designed as a warship. More for scientific research and exploration. But the Federation must have ships designed for war. Technically, they're Starfleet ships representing the Federation. But yes. I see. Sidron. A pleasure meeting you, Commander. I'm sure we'll cross paths again. Uh. Okay, müssen wir zu den Alludian, Alu, Alu, wie heißen die? Alidians, Alludianen? Kann ich mal hier lang? Bewundere das Wasser. Hm. Soothing. Hm, hm. Ja. Und dann gehe ich mal hier zu den Alludia. Wie heißen die? Ich spreche mit, nee, ich spreche mit denen da. I'm probably not telling you anything you don't already know, but these negotiations rely on the Federation's neutrality. Das sind keine As does any hope you might have for a supply of dilithium in the future. So, why you would choose to side with the Hotari escapes me. Without a Lydian involvement, there is no dilithium trade. We are and will remain completely neutral. Our only interest is the peaceful resolution to this conflict. Yeah. As is ours. Of course, the question is, at what price? A major solid Arminta, Special Attaché, Elidian Armed Forces. Pleasure to meet you, Commander. I have my issues with the Hotari, but I have to give them some credit. They know how to seize an opportunity. Inciting an uprising the same day as a massive once-in-a-lifetime ion storm. Our assumption was that this storm was just an anomaly. Yes, a very convenient anomaly. At least that was what we were told. Of course, I wasn't there. But who am I to say otherwise? Something tells me there's more to the story. 
So what really happened? Well, the official story is that it was the storm that enabled the revolt. How else do a bunch of unarmed, unorganized miners seize control of an entire moon, much less thousands of mines? But I've talked to people who were there. They tell a different story. They say they're lucky to have escaped with their lives. That it was more than just the storm. That somehow the miners were able to harness the energy from the storm. I know it sounds crazy. I'm not even sure I believe it myself. But that's what they said. Hmm. You said the Hotari were primitive. Well, they are. Except for the part about weaponizing ion storms. Hmm, okay. If you'll excuse me, Commander Ryder. Interessant, interessant, interessant. Commander, if I could have a quick word with you. Yeah, again. Of course. I'm encouraged to see the Federation supporting my people. I'm afraid of what might happen without your help. If anyone deserves thanks, it's Ambassador Spock. No one is more invested in negotiating a peaceful settlement to this conflict than he is. I'm so glad. We need his help before the situation escalates further than it already has. It's been... very trying. I saw you speaking with the Illidian. I'm sure they're painting themselves as the victims. The Illidians are under the impression the Hotari are somehow the cause of the Ion Storm. <laughs> Which I'm sure they attribute to our lack of experience or sheer inferiority. But we are as much the victims of this horrific storm as they are. For the first time in our history, the Hotari have the upper hand. We see ourselves as strong instead of downtrodden. New voices have risen up. Old voices shouted down. Calvin and Sidron have become national heroes. Now, they have the Queen's ear. Better or worse, depending on your perspective. I get the sense you don't exactly trust them. They're miners, not diplomats. I don't trust their instincts, which are leading us to war. My fear has been that the Illidians will launch an attack and crush us. You've seen their starship, no doubt. They could have retaken the mines whenever they wanted to, but it never happened. And as strange as this may sound, I'd almost say they're afraid. I just don't know what they're afraid of. It's still the same bluster and bravado you would expect from them. But it has no teeth. Like they're afraid of what might happen. Do you think it has something to do with the Ion Storm? Right now, it's stronger than ever, isn't it? It's entirely possible. I'm not a scientist, but I do know the storm has knocked out all kinds of systems. So maybe the Illidians weren't willing to risk their ships, given all the interference. Since the day of the revolt, Galvin has seized control of the mines and restricted all access. No one's allowed without his personal authorization. And they've taken over a section of the palace with just as much secrecy and security. I'm told it could be something they brought back from the mines. I've made inquiries, but everyone pretends it doesn't What's exist. Something I strongly suspect they're hiding something. What do you think it is? I've heard rumors it's some sort of ancient artifact, but I haven't seen it myself. How can we know? Okay, und an der Stelle beende ich diese Folge. Ich bedanke mich sehr fürs dabei sein. Das ist voll wie Film gucken die ganze Zeit oder eine neue Star Trek Serie. Ich liebe es. Bin so gespannt, wie es hier weitergeht an der Stelle und wer von den beiden Völkern jetzt böse ist, wer die Guten sind, oder waren sie einfach nur war das nur ein Kollateralschaden von diesem Iron Ionensturm? Was ist der Ionensturm? Was haben die gefunden? Ich bin sehr gespannt. Vielen Dank fürs Zuschauen und bis zur nächsten Folge. Macht's gut. Tschüss.